50 vertical cable keystone punch. Oh, that thing is so nice. I got it like two days ago. So it's the first time getting to use it. So I'm very excited. Cool, man. Yeah. So it, the meeting's being recorded, Mark. So don't say anything that will compromise your HIPAA uh, laws over there. <laughs> well, you can only edit this. I'm not joking. So we got Zach. We got John Laurie as well. Cool beans. <clears throat> Let me share my screen and we'll get started. Hey, Zach, you there? Zach Cordova, are you there? Yeah, Blake, I'm here. I'll be right there. Okay. Okay, you're good, man. Sorry. And then I saw I saw Raymond's face pop up. I think he uh, was on video. and Now he's on mute. You there, Raymond? Yes, sir. I'm here. Hey, what's up, Raymond? How are what you, man? Is, uh, we got to do that podcast, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 uh, I'm, I'm so far behind. I've got, on, on I've, got four, I've got four in the in the queue right now, and uh, I've been struggling because I've been using all this different new equipment, and I think I got it kind of figured out. So, what? Um, <laughs> when do you want to do it this week? Uh, well, if a, you got four in the queue, don't worry. You get those done, and whenever whenever you have time. Yeah, I mean, I can record more. I just have to, I have to post, produce, and publish for. Yeah, I know, I know. So, That's why I stay quiet. I know you do. You got enough on your plate. Yeah, I'll get caught up. I just no doing, a lot of, doing a lot of restructuring over here at cool. the headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> let me uh, let me get a attendees list. We got Mark Salent, John Laurie, <clears throat> Zach Cordova. Um, Raymond Karam. Let's see who else we got. That's it for now. Let's see. We're let's see, Joe, happy to provide. What is this? <clears throat> I'm going to get started, even though I know that we're going to have a few more people join. I think Marco and I think Josh is going to going to jump in but um it is 1 30 central hold on i think somebody oh sebastian sebastian's a new uh he he's a new ambassador so i'm gonna let him in the meeting okay i am here <clears throat> okay so that's zach and then so yep. i think we had a few more people join um i just let sebastian in uh, he's he's a new ambassador and sebastian how do you pronounce your last name sebastian's on mute right now we'll uh we'll come back to you and then uh, a 201, I recognize that from, from uh, our boys up in Jersey. That's Marco, probably. What's up, guys? How are you? Pretty good. How you doing, man? Good, good. Enjoying the weather, that's for sure. It's 72 degrees in Jersey. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think Christina joined as well, so the uh, 901 area code. Is that Memphis? Where is that exactly? Christina. Memphis. Hey, everybody. What is the 901 area code? Memphis? Memphis. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm glad you're here in Nashville. I don't like Memphis. <laughs> Me, too. I don't <laughs> like Memphis, either. It's, all, it's, uh, huh, it's all right. All right, so we got Marco no. Chaffee. We got Marco Chaffee. Uh, we just lost all of our Memphis listeners and ambassadors. So Marco Chaffee. Uh, who else? Christina Baker is in the house. Dude, what about Cleveland, though? Cleveland rocks, bro. I love Cleveland. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland saved my life. The towpath in Akron. <laughs> What's up, guys? Who that? Sebastian. There. Hey, Sebastian. How do you pronounce your last name? Usami. Usami. That's what I. That's what I thought. Just want to make sure, though. Well, hey, Sebastian. Welcome to the Ambassador Mastermind meeting. Thank you for. Uh, um, hitting me up in the Slack channel, I, I have to get all the, all the things updated. But I appreciate you attending and uh, just yeah, kind of hang absolutely. out for a little bit. Yeah, man, just kind of hang out for a little bit, and uh, we'll do goal setting at the end, and I'll kind of call on you and see see what you got going on. But we got we got a pretty structured agenda uh, at, at the meeting, and then we'll just go from there. So thank you. Got all sorts of people joining. Got another. What is it? What, who's the eight one four number? Keep forgetting who that is. That's Pierce. 
That's Pierce. That's what, okay, Pierce, man, where where have you been, brother? <laughs> I'm back. Finally, I'm back. thought you were thought you were dead. <laughs> nope, no dead. I know. I could. I see you on Instagram. You're all over the place. Sebastian, Mi- Michigan zombie. almost killed him, but he survived. <laughs> what happened in Michigan? <laughs> Michigan was fine. Shut up. Okay. Is that is that, is that Chris <laughs> Tiffany? Maybe. It is Chris Tiffany. And who else am I missing? There's a couple other people that came on. Chris Tiffany, but then Christina. Christina, put your phone on mute. And then Pierce, put your phone on mute. You're tapping away on the keyboard. What's and the then, mute key? Pound, pound six? I'll, I don't know, man. <laughs> Last time we put you on mute, we couldn't get you back. So just kind of. I know. Just, just keep the noise floor down, I guess. <laughs> Okay. Man, we got a lot of people in here. Holy crap. <clears throat> got Mick from uh, First Point Comms. He just joined. What's up, Mick? <clears throat> hey, Blake. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, man. <laughs> hey, Mick, it- what, how are you doing in Australia, man? It's it's so sad what's going on. <laughs> oh, it's crazy times, mate. Um, yeah, the, the whole east, the east coast is just, uh, yeah. Having a really hard time at the moment. Sort of. Yeah. Kept Is it impacting you in Melbourne at all? Look, not really. No, it's uh, Melbourne's sort of more on the southern end, but it's. Uh, I mean, it's very close, and uh, yeah, but um, not me personally. But uh, we, when we were away on holidays uh, after Christmas, we were fairly close enough. We could sort of, from a from a bit of a lookout, we could see. You know, it's just strange seeing a red glow in the distance. Uh, wow. So, yeah. Very eerie and uh, crazy, man. It is so sad of, what's going on. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, it's sad for the wildlife too. It's uh, yeah, it's gonna yeah, gonna cause a lot of problems. Yep. Well, thanks for joining, man. <clears throat> yeah, actually, yeah, I had a couple of guys reach out to me actually, and uh, yeah, to to mention or to to ask how to donate and things like that. So it was uh, really nice. A couple of the uh, yep. <laughs> low voltage nation guys. That was yeah, it was really nice. <clears throat> well, that's good. Good. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's get started. We're kind of behind right now. We got a full packed agenda once again. Uh, my name is Blake, and uh, thank you for attending the Ambassador Mastermind meeting. Put your phones on mute, whoever, whoever is <laughs> clicking away there. I know you're getting after it, but put it on mute. <laughs> cool. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to start it out with a quote. <clears throat> this time I did a big old picture of Albert Einstein. He's one of my favorite dudes. He's so smart. Uh, creativity is intelligence having fun. That's. You know, for me, I'm, I'm a creative person, at least I think I am, and I like to have fun. Uh, and that, that's a lot, a lot of the reasons what we do here, uh, what we're doing here at, uh, at Low Voltage Nation is we're, we're finding creative ways to solve problems and we're having fun doing it. At least uh, I hope we are. We'll definitely be having fun at the meetup. Um, I think, Mark, you said you're going to be at the Marriott, and then Chris Tiffany's going to be doing the after party at the Marriott. So I don't know what's going on with that, but it'll be fun for sure. The purpose of this meeting is to continue building this uh, community, which is growing like every day. Uh, We got 40 ambassadors now, um, most of which are pretty active. As far as I can tell, we got almost 100 people in the uh, the Slack channel, a lot of stuff going on on Instagram. LinkedIn is huge as well. That's a big growth strategy. Uh, What I like to do is showcase the ambassadors work on LinkedIn, especially, and uh, also Facebook, uh, Twitter sometimes. (laughs) And, uh, also on Instagram. Uh, Instagram is where a lot of us have met. And we continue to grow our businesses, our personal brands, and and Low Voltage Nation on all these uh, social platforms in a, in a healthy, positive way. And lastly, we uh, we like to share knowledge. Uh, community over, over competition. I think Pierce started that hashtag, and a lot of us have adopted that, but it, it's the darn truth. Uh, we're, we're here to build the community and share knowledge and and not necessarily be like competitors we give each other business and we give, give each other encouragement to to do better and meet the uh the gold standard which is another big purpose i'm actually going to put that in the purpose right here so we keep that in mind that's a big that's a big topic today and every day gold standard all right uh i think i press record i hope i did let's double check Yes, I did. Okay, it's being recorded. It will be published on YouTube. And I also publish the meeting agendas on LinkedIn to just kind of showcase what we're doing and tag everybody that's that's uh, attended and uh, go from there. Phone's on mute. Thank you very much. And then the Ambassador Slack 
channel is is live. I want to make sure that I'm up to date. It's like I think I am. Um, yep. So if you have any questions or want to drop any relevant content, like pictures or um, videos that are relevant to what we're talking about, please do so in the Ambassador uh, Slack channel. Uh, and while I'm on this topic, uh, for the meetup, I've created a meetup channel. Uh, so anything that, that pertains to the meetup, please use that if, you, if you're lost or if you have any questions or you want to um, interact if you're remote and not attending the meetup in person. This is where we're going to be interacting during the meetup. <clears throat> Got a couple organizers, myself and Marco. Uh, he's going to be pr providing us with some, uh, some, wis some wisdom around the, uh, the resident automation stuff. Um, uh, but also uh, previous action items, remember to uh, follow all the ambassadors across the um, the uh, different social channels. And we do have, let me pull this up real quick. It's the, uh, <clears throat> it's the LVN repository. Uh, everybody should have, have access to this. Let me just drop in a link to it real quick. Get shareable link, copy this, and then this has a lot of information in it. Uh, one thing especially is the ambassador contact list. So Eric Winders uh, has, has been maintaining this. We, we did some workflow analysis and uh, came up with an onboarding process that Eric Winders uh, has taken charge doing. So everybody has access to this. So if you want to go in and, and reach out, contact people, send people swag, or go to their social platforms. Most of them are populated in here. So it's a really powerful and useful contact list for everybody and all the ambassadors have access to it. <clears throat> cool. All right, let's, uh, let's get into um, some focus area around residential automation. Um, so it's a pretty hot topic for, I think, for a lot of us and, and me as an end user more so. Yeah, you know, I have to turn off a lot of my devices in my room because there's so much Wi-Fi going on. I, have, I think I have like nine light bulbs and a, some Google Home devices and all this stuff. And it has to be controlled across many different apps, which is annoying. I don't like it. And then one of the uh, discussions with, uh, that Marco brought up was what he's seeing in the industry as an installer and integrator is that these things want to be people want them to be simplified so marco just kind of let's let's start talking about what you have on this list and how it relates to what we're seeing um as a shift in the industry yeah absolutely so um <clears throat> like you and i had briefly touched on it uh where you know like you're saying no one really wants to deal with multiple apps and that's the, the biggest thing that we're starting to see uh, shift wise, um, through the, the Hey, Marco, I think you're breaking up. Is, is anybody else experiencing that? Cause I can't hear Marco right now. Yeah, I can't hear him either. I lost him. Okay. I think, we, Hey Marco, I think we lost you. <laughs> we might have to skip ahead to, uh, to back. yeah, I might just skip ahead on the agenda and see if he get, comes back. Let me go into this. Coming out. Uh, back. I think I think you're back. I think it's kind of choppy, but um, yeah, I, I didn't catch hardly anything that you said initially. So if you want to start over, uh, bummer. All right, well, I'll, I'll you, start hey, over. I'll start back. Yeah. So wait, hey Marco, where are you right now? <laughs> are you I'm home. Tunnel? Oh, what's going on? <laughs> Is it terrible? <laughs> no, it's not bad. Uh, tr try try it again. Try and start again. Let's see what happens. How about now? Yep, you're good. All right. All right, cool. So one of the big things that I really see in the in the market is, like you're saying, Blake, you know, everyone's got these apps, multiple apps, and they do all different things, and everyone wants uh, essentially a single point of communication, a single point of interaction, because nobody wants all these multiple apps. How do I control this? What about notifications? So... The big thing that we've really been seeing and, and dealing with is, um, you know, again, not to plug, but alarm.com seems to be one of the easiest, stream, most streamlined, um, really, integrations overall, you know, as far as what you can do with it, interface, how, how simple it is to use, and, and just really without any training. That's what's so great about it. So... 
that's that's a big thing on the residential side that I've been seeing. And uh, just to get into, you know, some of the things that we were talking about, like what you can control with it. I mean, the, the possibilities are really getting almost endless. You know, you can pretty much integrate everything and anything you want into the um, into the platform. Hey, J- Josh, are you on the call right now? Yes, I am. I think you sent me a DM about yeah. um, about this uh, stuff. What are you seeing in the industry in terms of like trying to make things a little more streamlined? So, so I, you know, I, I definitely want to echo a lot of what what Marco is saying is, but what what we're seeing is is you know we we tend to focus more on the higher end of things where you know where where it's more where we're doing either a control four system or a savant system that's you know that that's sitting on top of all of these things and it it seems like we're we're having kind of this um either i want all of this stuff i don't really and i'm i'm you know, I don't really have a budget and that's not for real, but you know, they, they, they've got higher budgets or it's, I've got all this stuff, but I want you to do it for me. And, and that's, you know, that, that's, that's the thing that, you know, that intrigues me about learning more about alarm.com and some of these other solutions to kind of understand how, uh, those of us that have been in this realm for a long time, how we do things like that and remain profitable. So to touch on, on that, Josh, you know, we're, we're a, a, a Christian dealer, right? So a lot of things which, which have been tough is a lot of the Crestron customers are getting wind of these other systems, right? Like, you know, we do control for also but don't tell Crestron. <laughs> but, um, you know, you get this, not in, I hate to say they get a bad rap, but Crestron has been around for so long and so many dealers have tarnished the name that it's so hard to get them back into, so to speak, good graces. So a lot of them, and, and the prime example, I have a customer out, out in the Hamptons on Long Island and, and he's got a hundred thousand dollar Crestron system. And, the guy can't turn on his Sonos and it's just, it's so frustrating to him and, and it's, and it's nothing we did. It's programmed very simple. You know, I always say nothing should be more than three steps away and it's two, you know, it's like source Sonos and you're off to the races. And I think it's just gotten, some of these systems have gotten such a bad rap that when people hear of like these other systems, like, Oh, let me try ring. Let me try nest. I think because it's new, and the system was originally geared for application-based control that people don't think that, you know, like a crush run or a control four can do that nicely. So I, I've been seeing that also. Well, one of the other things to, to, to kind of get in there in the realm of Nest that we got to see firsthand with, with one client where he, you know, he had one of those six-figure budgets, but was adamant about, I love my Nest stuff. I've got to have, you know, I've got to have Nest cameras. I don't want any of your, your hardwired cameras or anything like that. And, you know, what we got to see is that a lot of these, a lot of these off-the-shelf systems uh, are great. If you're doing a couple of these you know, you're putting two or three of these cameras up or you're putting, you know, a couple of these sensors up or a couple of these other things up, then they tend to work pretty good. When you start putting these things in scale, then you've got to make sure that they've got a solid network in place. And even still, the vast majority of these, uh, you know, IoT devices are almost almost all Wi-Fi based and can can cause havoc absolutely and i agree with that i i I really do even even when we first started you know using alarm.com for more than just alarm control and and thermostats 
you know, our, our go-to was always Crestron. Hey, let's, let's do a full fledged system and, and let's integrate it the correct way. And you can utilize all these great cameras and, and the alarm panels, you know, and then it kind of went to, well, I don't want to, I don't really think I need that, you know, and then alarm.com started to grow and they're like, all right, well, you could do 12 cameras on a system. So it's a very, it's a very interesting market, I would say, because you have two different really, um, I feel like not necessarily residential customers, but two different kinds of, uh, of groups, if you will, you know, depending on what level their home is at or their business. I mean, business side of things, you know, we, we pretty much just do Crestron because that's really the market for that, you know, but, um, it's, it's very interesting how these systems are starting to, to grow and, and kind of get different reach, if you will, into different um, customers. Marco, are, are you installing any of the, uh, the Honeywell or Residio products like Lyric? You know, you, know, you, you and I, Blake, and, and, and John, <laughs> Jonathan, too, we're, we're all, we're kind of, Honeywell is a sore subject for us, you know? Um, I'll, I'll be honest because that's the way I am, you know, and I, I like to, to voice my real world experience. You know, um, we've, we've done a lot of lyric, a lot of links, a lot of the Vista stuff. And I have no problem with the Vista stuff and the fire stuff is all great. And I, everything, all that's perfect. But when you get into the Honeywell automation, quote unquote, or, Hey, my thermostat wants to talk to my Honeywell panel it gets real, real gray and their support yeah. is kind of like running and trying to reach the other side of the Grand Canyon. You're not going to make it. And yeah, it's just, it's been frustrating. It really has. So I've really stayed away from it. Now I'm, I'm doing two gig qualsys, you know, that kind of side of things. Well, yeah, so I was wondering how the lyric uh, stacks up against something like an alarm.com product. Could you make a comparison to that? in terms of like ease well, of use and on, on the automation side big difference it's a it's probably i i would i mean you could program you know one of the two gig panels or a closest panel from like leaving your shop to the customer home that's how quickly this thing can be done and the honeywell stuff i just feel like sometimes the contacts read sometimes they don't learn and then sometimes the cell card stops responding and then, you know, you call Honeywell Tech for uh, AlarmNet, and they're like, oh, well, it's, the radio's fine. So I just feel like that it's – they're trying – they tried too late to get into the game, I feel like. And it's just now creating this big stir or this big wave of the dealers are now getting tarnished because they're like, well, if we're going to do some automation stuff, we're going to stay away from the Honeywell if we're going to just do a basic Vista, like a 10 or a 20 P cool all day, you know, go ahead and run with it. But I, I feel like a lot of it is just, it's been tarnished already, you know? Yeah. I, I was tasked with doing some promo stuff for, for Lyric, uh, my previous company. And, and I started playing around with it and I was having a really, really difficult time installing it. And then the automation stuff wasn't really working that well. And then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's this stuff right i mean you may or may not have heard the term and i'm sure other guys probably have lick and stick right that's the way these things are you have to compete with the big boys you got your adts your slowmans your p1s you know and all these companies all they really do is sell that's it here oh you want an alarm here it's you know 59 dollars a month for three years give me a contract i'm out the door so when you can offer something that's more of a, hey, let me add lights, let me add bulbs, let me add water sensors, and you can kind of tailor it for every customer, and it can be done efficiently, and you don't have to call tech support every time you go to a job, that's what wins the business. You know, if I have to send a guy to a, to a, a new home and they have a, you know, a cell problem with the, with the radio out of a, a Lyric or a Lynx, they'll be there for two hours. You know, you get something, a problem with like a two gig panel or, or Qualsys and you have to call, let's say alarm.com or you call two gig, you get tech support pretty quick. Alarm.com is sometimes you have to wait, but the two gig guys and the Qualsys guys are, are 
a lot quicker than the Honeywell guys, and they know their stuff inside and out. And I, again, I'm not ragging on Honeywell because we do a lot of their fire stuff. Right. And I just think that they had their niche. They have their, their market with the Vistas and the, and the older style panels. And they're just now trying to get, you know, less five years into that automation side with these quick panels. And it's just the, the gearing, the programming is just, it's not there. So what about some of the other items on this list? You have, you know, like door locking, energy management, you know, camera, fire and smoke. What were your thoughts around some of these other items that you have on the list, Marco? So what's, what's really nice is, you know, you can have a system where you have an alarm, right? You put the alarm in, cool. I have, you know, 10 zones and awesome. And then you get the customer and says, well, you know, maybe I want to add, um, I'd really like to, to put my outside lighting on it because, that's where I have problems or I want, if I'm not home, I want to be able to have that triggered remotely. So all these things can be almost a la carte, right? You can just add them as you go and they can all be tied into back to we'll use alarm.com because that's really the focus on uh, in this section, I will say where, you know, all this stuff, you arm the system. All right. I'm, I'm leaving or let's say I forget to arm the system. I leave for the day. When you get to a certain geo fence, whatever you want to set it, you know, a mile, five miles, whatever it may be, you can have all these other scenes and trigger points hit the system. And they can say, all right, hey, I want, you know, when I'm X amount away, I want my lights to go on or I want my, I want to make sure my garage door is shut. All these cool things that really give an added feature set or an added um, I would say sense of security to the, to the customer, you know, and, and what's, what's very nice is as well is like, as you get into the other items, you get your fire, um, you get, you know, your energy management, all this stuff can be tied in with the same platform and you can get reporting and you can really see everything. And, and another big part of it is what they call wellness, right? So say you have an elderly person, whether it's, you know, your grandmother, your mother, your father, whoever it may be, you can have the system monitor the motion sensors and monitor the doors and the windows. And you can tell just by looking back at the web interface or the mobile app that, you know, so-and-so is moving around the house or, you know, maybe you want to have like the pendants, right? The pendants are big. And if they have a slip and fall, they can just press the button and the pendant will call out. Or if it's tied to like an Apple watch, if they do the, have the fall sensor activated, when the watch senses that fall, it can then call out to central station. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. The integration can work with all different products, but again, going back to that one app platform. Right. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. You know, I'm wondering what customers think of all the stuff that we're installing. Do they use it? Are they, do they like it? Or they just want something a little more simple. So, Lately, I would say within the last like six months, I've been seeing a lot more people use it because through our dashboard, we can see, again, example, alarm.com, we can see who's kind of utilizing the system, their arms, the disarms, of course, you know, all that's mm-hmm. essential. And it, and I've been seeing it, a lot of people are more interactive with it now because they have it very easily accessible. You know, you open the app and bam, your dashboard has everything you want, your cameras, your Sonos, your thermostats, whatever you want it to be. You know, we have a lot of customers where they have multiple homes. So if they have a their primary home and their secondary home, let's say at the shore, they can tell the system, right, hey, when I'm leaving my house here, when I'm 10 miles away from my second home, I want the, the air conditioning to go on. I want the lights to go on. I want my garage door to open when I get close. So there's all these things that you don't have to have, you know, you can have a no touch almost in a sense. So it's it's pretty wild how you can see what can be done again with all these different manufacturers all tied back into one app. So Mark's Mark Salent has a question. Did you want to ask the question on the on the call? Yeah, yeah. I just stepped out of the the building here here real quick. Um, so when you come with when people come to you and they're looking for a one app integration, do you typically find that people have a part of a system 
and they try to retain that part of the system and try to integrate it with something else? Or did they come to you and say, I don't care if you have to rip it out, just I want everything on one app? What, what kind of percentages are you looking at between those, those two different options? Um, I would probably say it's, it's more the customers that will get it's either they have a really old system, you know, like an old Honeywell Vista uh, or an old GE panel. And they say, well, you know, what's it going to cost to upgrade me to a whole new panel because this is old and it's wired and I want to add other things. I would probably say it's a decent split for us, a 50-50. You know, we had a customer not too long ago with a a brand new home they bought. And the builder, I guess, went on a budget, of course, like they all do. And he put an old Concord 3 panel in. And he was like, well, if you, you know, the, the home's brand new if we can reuse the panel and you can add all the other features to it, I think that would, that would really be the route I want to go. So we go in and we try to dig through it and, and I was able to add a module, sell module for alarm.com to it. But then he wanted to add smoke detectors and he wanted to add these different systems that didn't essentially integrate with the old Concord panel. So between that and then the smoke detectors, the system was discontinued for like two years. We couldn't find any parts. I was like, well, I can get you six smoke detectors, but you really need 12. So at that point we just went and we swapped the whole panel out, but you get to a point sometimes where, you know, you run, you come across these situations and you feel bad that you got to tell the customer, Hey, it's going to cost you, you know, 1500 bucks to change everything because your brand new home that you just bought has a panel that was discontinued two years ago. But I, I would definitely say it's it's a fifty fifty split. Um, if it's uh, you know if it's something that we're doing like a takeover on. Did that answer your question, Mark? Yes, yes, it did. Thank you. Okay, good. You're welcome. And then, and then uh, Josh, what did you mean by you said I'd like to stick with alarms that can integrate with a full automation solution? Would it, can you elaborate sure. upon that? Yeah. So, and I, I was actually about to start typing about that is so, so my challenge and in, in to, to kind of go back to that lyric thing for a second is, you know, I, I thought that that platform when they first introduced it, it, it looked like something that we should have been selling from, from a look and a feel. But the second that the rep said it didn't integrate with anything else, I walked out of the meeting. Um, so uh, what 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 I mean is it is is it's kind of like sticking with an alarm that's an alarm. So whether that be a Vista 20P or a, a DSC 1832 that can, if down the road, you know, if if the client's a pure security client right now, and even if it is with with some interactive features, using someone like an alarm.com. Um, but down the road, you know that they want to be a control four client, a Crestron client, someone that wants some of that higher level automation, that it's something that you're not going to have to rip and replace that can easily then integrate into that uh, full automation solution. Okay, cool. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. So, uh, Raymond, uh, th- thanks for your input. Did you have anything else you wanted to mention around alarm.com, um, working with those different manufacturers? Um, yeah, just like Marco said, um, it's a pretty powerful platform for people that haven't used it and they keep on growing their platform. And right. now they're doing Sonos. Now with the purchase of OpenEye, they're going more in the commercial end of it. That was like, um, I've talked to Marco before about Eagle Networks and um, uses Brevo. So I think Alarm.com is trying to get into that market with OpenEye now. So just the fact that um, they, they really make it simple. Their interface is really simple. I know that right now they're a little bit larger on the residential end, but they are getting into the commercial end. On, on their camera side, the only thing I don't personally like is that you can't pick your own cameras. Um, they're sort of closed on their, on, on their own cameras for now. Uh, but I think that purchase of uh, open I will make it better but we we also come across some customers who have older panels that um, 
yeah, we could get a, they have a, what they call a alarm.com SIM module that can make like uh, Honeywell panels or power series, DSC power series panels work with alarm.com. But sometimes when, if that, I, I've noticed, at least with us, when that customer has that mindset where they look to have some integration and have some automation and you show them a newer panel like a two gig or a Qualsys where um, it's a nice touch screen, it's a seven inch uh, screen that has nice features like, I remember in our last meeting, one of the gentlemen mentioned about Qualsys uh, not being able to swap the cell modules on it. I spoke to Qualsys, and I think for four or five years now, we're, we're okay. And when they do do that sunset, um, the, they'll probably give a decent discount to swap the panel. Because right now, if you get a typical cell, alarm.com cell, it's give or take 200 bucks. And they're looking at the panels probably being 100, 150 bucks more than that. But in that four or five years, you're getting a really nice panel. It has an integrated camera that could take pictures of whoever disarms the alarm, that has a built-in uh, crash and smash sensor. Um, it could pick, take, take, when it takes pictures of the person, it could send it to the app. So if you have kids in the house, you want to know if they came home alone, it has a built-in glass break sensor. It even has tutorial videos on how to do certain things so they don't have to call us, like swapping out sensor batteries. So there, and, and and then like Marco was saying, they're, they're pretty powerful and they're very easy to use. Like I, I have three guys in my crew and it doesn't take more than once or twice to teach these guys. And, um, and, their, and their customer service is unbelievable. And now they have on all their radios, I think they're dual path. So with the Qualsys, you could do cellular and Wi-Fi and like the hardwired panels, you could do a hard uh, ethernet connection and cellular. So. Sometimes when we're, uh, I have an app with my monitoring station, when we send signals, honest to God, like I'll, I'll refresh as soon as I send a signal. Within less, I'd say less than, easily less than 10 seconds, I get the signal. So I, I don't know, I'm, to us it's, 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 it's been great. Like we just did a volunteer fire department and he, the, the chief wanted to see who's coming in and out of the door. So we put a Z-Wave smart lock and uh, that automatically disarms the alarm. Now, then he wanted a thermostat because it's a volunteer firehouse, so half the time there isn't too many people there. So he wants to be able to control the temperature and um, doesn't take much to do. So I'm just excited this year, I'm gonna try to make it to ISC West to see what they're gonna do with OpenEye and what right. direction they're going. Yeah, it, it, it's so. exciting what alarm.com is going on, at least in my opinion. And I would like yeah. to actually get one of the guys there from their marketing team or maybe like even somebody on the technical team to get on the podcast and talk about some inside baseball stuff if anybody has any contacts uh, yeah i got a contact there's a there's a guy who travels his name is i think uh jamine or jasmine uh, I'll, I'll get his contact i've, I've been to two, yeah. two three of his trainings and uh he's a very nice guy he's very very knowledgeable he's actually one of the first 40 or 80 employees they had so cool yeah so um action item for you raymond um thank you you just yes, uh <laughs> you gotta get me a con so get blake contact for alarm.com adc alarm.com yep cool man just drop, yeah just send me a dm or drop it in the ambassador channel and i'll follow for up sure you. cool thank man. You. Thank you. yeah and keep and keep me posted if uh you know if, if raymond if your guy doesn't get back to him just let me know um okay I'll get my guy on there too okay but yeah you're right you know they're 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 all awesome. They really are. I think. I think the biggest thing too is that they're they're also. I don't want to say proud, but they're also involved with the platform and how everything works. You know, it's it's a it's a continuously evolving ecosystem. You know, they're always putting advanced information into it. And they're like, hey, what can we do next? How can we do this better? And they're they're almost kind of like like a Snap AV in, in my eyes, where they're always looking to see what can we do and. And, you know, Snap AV just bought our Control 4. So it's it's companies like that that really help make all of us grow because we don't have to keep looking for other companies to say, all right, what do we have to learn next? What do we have to do next? How do we make this ecosystem get better and better? It's always easier for us when the companies that we're working with evolve as we evolve. So I think that's big, too. Right. Cool. Uh, did anybody else have anything they wanted to add to the residential automation section? If not, I'm going to have to move on. we got a lot more to cover. 
going once, going twice. Yeah, cool. well, one quick thing. I'm just curious. What what's oh, yeah, everyone's yeah. go to panel for their all in ones? I would take. What was the uh, the question, Zach? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Oh no, no problem. I, I was just curious what everyone's go to panel is for an all in one system. Like we're we're moving to two gig from Qualsys for a, f a few reasons. Um, one being you can actually replace the cell radios in them. Um, two, it's a slightly lower price point and the feature set doesn't appear to be too different. And then also um, all the peripherals are quite a bit cheaper than what you could find like with PowerG and Qualsys or even um, Qualsys' own sensors that they manufacture. I'm not sure who OEMs those unless they do. Um, and then also we can also we can brand the two gig panels as well with our logo stamp on them and stuff. So I'm I'm just curious what everyone else uses as their preference of uh, a all in one system. Zach, we've been um, we've been using the two gig, I'd say for the last probably year and a half, two years, going away from the uh, the Honeywell lyric side uh, of things, and and they've been great. Okay. Glad to hear that because we just we just installed our first two two gig panels. So uh, interesting to see how they work. Yeah, Zach. Um, me personally, I'm, I'm going towards where you're going away from, just because where we live, a lot of our local dealers are DSC dealers, and um, we have in our in, in Northern California most most likely a lot of the dealers are were have been DSC dealers. So I just like the feature of the Qualsys where. Uh, I can get the Qualsys panel with the DSC radio built into it. So when I do a, a wireless takeover, I don't need to get a translator from resolution products or anything else. And it, it's, I, I've always thought about two gig, but since I've always been a DSC guy, the power G stuff, just to have it at the, as an option, just in case it's in house, like we did a pretty big house at a farm. We, we live in an ag agricultural area where they had a shed that was like a hundred, it was like over 200 feet away where they stored all their tractor stuff and just with the power G worked great. So for me personally, I'm, I'm for right now, I'm enjoying Qualsys. I've, I've thought about two gig, but we're, we're slowly going towards Qualsys. So, and we get okay. great pricing. So if you ever, uh, if it's a pricing issue, you just uh, send me a DM and then I'll, I'll put you in contact with our supplier. Just, just curious what, what supplier do you guys use? What, what's the, what? Who's your guys' supplier? Oh, we use a custom electronics supply. They have a branch in Manteca, California, and in San Jose. And okay. um, I've been with them ever since I started, just because they're about 25 minutes from where we live. And they're like more local guys. They're smaller, and they just they care. So they give us um, – if somebody hops on with national pricing, they'll share that national pricing with all of us other dealers. So That's awesome. Yeah. So send me a DM, and then I'll, I'll, I'll be more than happy to help you out with that too. Okay. Thanks, Remy. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's uh, let's move on to the um, the rack and the parts list. So I'll kick it over to Zach here in a second. Um, I think we're actually looking pretty good. I got the Cisco stuff. I got the ten four optic stuff, and vertical cable is on route. Zach, what what other information do you have for us? Well, I, I think we're pretty much on the up and up on getting all of our equipment in. Um, I am actually, which I could drop the picture in the ambassador's channel. Um, I, I think your proof of the design I was going to do for that 3U rack mount deal. Uh, mm -hmm. Brandon Weber sent that 3U rack mount blank out to me. So at some point today, I'm going to be cutting the holes in it and putting in the low voltage brackets. Cool. And then we can put the keystones of our choice in there and have a nice solid place to plug in on the rack and kind of simulate a working network. Um, so that'll be coming from me here in a few days. And then all the vertical cable stuff is on its way to you as far as I'm concerned, other than those six inch yellow uh, slimline patch cables. Mm -hmm. So I know Marco said that he can send those in to you with the shirts and that'll be taken care of so we don't have these long one foot patch cables going from one knee to the next. Right. Yeah. Is that is that the case, Marco? You have some of those uh six inch slim lines? Yes. Yellow. Okay. Do you have twenty twenty four? Is that the count? 
Zach? 24, I believe. Yep, 24. Okay. Maybe one Maybe or two. I'll throw in a, a bonus one. You know, I'll give you 25. You're going to give me 25? <laughs> you can do that for me, Marco. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I think Eric Winders was saying that they're hard to standardize the six inch slim lines for yellow. Is that, I don't know what he meant by that exactly. Are they hard to get or something? Is that what we're doing? Well, ye- yellow is um, kind of hard. Go ahead. Go ahead, Marco. We just did one. Uh, we just did a job where I got like, I don't know, 600 of them. Okay. So um, may- maybe I cleared out their, their warehouse. Um, but yeah. I, I haven't seen any issues getting them. You know, okay. I know. Then, um, he- Mono get them, them, but they're typically cables and connections. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What else, Zach? <clears throat> and then I think that covers about everything. Um, something else that kind of threw in last minute when I was talking to Mike is I've got some bulk Velcro we can cut and bundle everything with for our cable management in the back because that's something that we kind of overlooked. Oh, yeah, Velcro. Time. So, yeah, standards. we're getting a uh, white, black, and blue, so we can cut it however long and then just wrap it. Um, and then kind of, kind of what I was thinking, because we're going to have this open frame rack, um, some of the stuff that we're not going to punch down going anywhere, you know, like some of the drops from the data patch panel right. going down to those jacks for actual functioning cable. But the rest of everything, I thought we could maybe bring it up out of the rack as if you're going to go into a ceiling, like maybe mm-hmm. a foot or so, and just cut it off and Velcro it, as if you just yep. chopped it off going into the ceiling and took it with. So we have kind of a display model, and we can just bundle that up and Velcro it. Exactly. Yeah, I was thinking about that today, actually. And I know that Chris Tiffany mentioned that he was willing to get some sort of um, backboard for it and conduit, which I don't think we want to do at this point. It might be too complex. Um, but as long as we can kind of bundle bundle it up and make it look nice with Velcro as it comes out of all the, the patch panel, then I think it'll look good. You know, I, I actually think that's an awesome idea. So we could put the the uh, plywood on the back of the rack, yeah. so rack support, and then have like a uh, like a four inch riser conduit with a bushing on each end, and mm-hmm. just have a cable clamp on there. So I, that's actually a great idea. You just run it up there and then just cut it off a little ways from the top of the conduit. That's actually a great idea. Yeah, we just got to figure out how we're going to store this and transport it for the next meetup is what I'm a little concerned about. I don't want to have all these. Well, the easiest way to really transport it would probably be to just use half-inch plywood or something like that to just screw to all four or all six sides. So it basically just turns into a crate. Um, And then you can just pop off the the front, top, bottom um, pieces. Uh, it's under 50 pounds it can probably be a checked bag where it's easy to stick a fedex label on and just ship it you know yeah um, i'm not sure if anybody bring... else... did anybody else hear that loud noise or is that just me? i did yeah. i don't know what that was yeah. Yeah. i think yeah, it was okay. ufos okay <laughs> yeah that, that was pretty intense i'm <laughs> I'm not sure what happened, Chris Tiffany, but all hell just broke loose. <laughs> well, my apologies on that. I don't know what's yeah, going we on. We all have tinnitus, so <laughs> it's hey, quiet over I here. I know I've been. I know I missed the last last couple of meetings about the rack and stuff, but are we actually mounting it to a backboard for display purposes at the hotel? I don't want to. Um, I think it's well, a kind of a good idea. We're just gonna let it lean on the lean on the table then. Yes. Okay. That, 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 that is the initial thought. I just don't think that there's going to be enough, you know, I guess, room, and just I don't want to have to do like all this construction work in a, in a conference room in a hotel. So, well, okay. kind of, kind of what I was thinking for the backboard is you could just, you know, the rack would still sit on the table, but it would just be sized. The board would be sized to the rack itself, oh, I got taller, you. and it'd be screwed onto the back of the rack, and that would hold that piece of conduit or conduits. I got you. So what we can do, we can kind of, we can plan it out. Uh, we have some time you know, set for Sunday morning. And yeah. as of right now, I don't want to do that. I don't want to add more complexity to an already complex meetup. Um, Tell you what, I'll, I'll bring what needs to be done for that with, and we can okay. choose it. Yeah, like I don't, you I know, worst you. case scenario, it stays in a corner of the room and doesn't get touched, but you know, like I, I don't care. It's, literally okay. nothing cost-wise and i'll just make sure we have it 
If you can just if you can bring it with you and it's not more additional like trips to Home Depot, then yes. Nah, nah, that's easy. I'll cut it first uh, at cool. the office here and just attach it. So send it. Sounds with good, you. man. Thanks, Chris. All right. Um, let's see what else we got. Make sure you RSVP. Um, we got a lot of people coming. We capped it off at about twenty-five to thirty. I don't think everybody RSVP'd on Meetup.com, but it would be helpful if you did. Um, so. There's going to be a lot of people there, I think. And then core team, uh, Chris Tiffany, Marco Chaffee, Christina, Kramer, myself, Pierce will all be there prior. Um, some are flying in on Friday. Some will be there Saturday. Uh, and then here is the agenda. So I want to do a 9 a.m. meeting on, on Sunday uh, just to go over everything. And then also Mike with Vertical Cable is going to be doing some interviews. So we're going to section off a little little spot in the conference room to do some interviews with the ambassadors if you want to do it i'll be doing one i think and whoever else wants to get involved in that so if you're coming in if you're on the core team i'd really like you to attend this meeting that's probably one of the most important things so we can get the room set up prior to the meeting when everybody starts shuffling in and then go from there any questions comments concerns on the uh, agenda sweet uh, LVN web interview Pierce is next. I don't know if you know this Pierce, but you're next on the interview. We're going to be sending you some questions and you got to fill it out. It, you have, you have four days. To we'll do it. You, you, you have, <laughs> you have four days to complete it or else you'll never get the interview. All good. Ah, I'm screwed. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I, got, I got you. You're good. Well, Marco did his and I did mine and you're next. Time me up. It up. Yep. Pierce, it only took me three weeks. So, I mean, you got, you got plenty of time <laughs> to beat me, man. Mark, all right, uh, the bar's been set. <laughs> the bar's been set. Yeah, low or high, I don't know. All right. Anyway, moving on. We got a lot of uh, goal setting stuff to do, so let's uh, let's knock this out. Let's see who we got on the call. Quite a bit. Trying to get organized here. Let's uh, let's start with. Let me get my filters. Where are my filters? I think somebody deleted my filters. How dare you? I think you had that issue every week. <laughs> uh, yeah. I created like filter views where it doesn't impact other people. It's a filter by name. <clears throat> All right. I think Brandon actually joined a little bit later. Brandon, hey, man, are you on the call? Yes, sir. What's up? Hey, man, what, uh, what you got going on? Uh, did you meet some goals and what you got going on this week? Well, uh, I'm going to be positioning ourselves to drop our largest client within the next month or two so that's fun um no. right now that's my biggest focus yeah. um i mean i kind of talked to you about it. it turned into a bigger mess on friday right four owners not talking to each other two of the owners are trying to bring in their own it guy and i'm just i'm over it yeah i hear that so <laughs> the guy told me when he came to do the walkthrough on Friday that he goes, well, even though I'm not the IT guy yet, I'm just going to show up once a week, walk around, see if anybody has any problems I can take care of. And so I'm, I'm done. Yeah. It's, it's way, 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 way too political. Yeah. I don't have time for it. So Keep that's my forward. biggest focus right now. <laughs> yep. Ugh. All right. Well, how can we help um, with that endeavor? Anything? <sighs> Not really. I just need to get a couple more clients onboarded and position myself money wise to feel comfortable dropping them. And yeah, just yep. a lot of stress. I hear that, man. Um, reach out to us if you uh, if you need anything. And yeah, anybody, and then I'm working on that. Uh, yeah, I'm working on that run book for you too. I'm. I want to send over something that doesn't have you know active passwords and stuff in it. So yeah, I'm just gonna... blank it out. But do not make that a priority. I can figure out a run book. I've done this in the past, but you got you got your plate pretty full, so don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, I'll see what I can do tonight, and I might try to yeah, send man. you over like a dummy client. That'd be cool, man. Um, right. All right. Well, just let us know how we can help, man. Will do. And also, oh yeah, also, who's next on the uh, the MSP Weekly uh, podcast? Well, I got sick last week, so I didn't have a chance to reach out to him, but I'm going to be reaching out to Eric and uh, get him signed up and okay. do the interview with him. But yeah, like kind of got down with uh, daycare cold last week, so took yeah. me down and out for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool, man. Well, keep me posted. Will do. Thanks, Brandon. Take care. Yeah. 
Uh, Chris Tiffany, what in Low Voltage Nation are you doing? Oh, there we go. Unmuted myself. It always helps. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous uh, when you unmute yourself now. Was... <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um, but uh, now we're still working on that one project for those like 70 locations. Um, yeah. So still working on that. I mean, it's kind of always a, a longer deal there. We've got a couple other things. Um, we're finishing up a bunch of stuff, some stuff for obviously the Low Voltage Nation meetup prep here this week. Um, mm -hmm. Still working to see. I think we've got Tom Lawrence locked in, so I think he's going to be able to make it down. He should know by tomorrow, um, and hopefully that'll be awesome. Kind of get some more, uh, some more content, video content, stuff like that. And uh, hey, anytime we can potentially get some exposure on a on a channel such as his is uh, is amazing. So um, you know he's he's kind of got got some solid. Solid community there. Um, yep, that that hundred thousand plus YouTube subscribers is uh, no small number. So <laughs> yep, I, I've I've watched his stuff before. Um, I, I've learned a lot from him actually. So I think that's pretty dope that you're gonna get get him to come potentially. Yeah, hopefully he said he's open right now and he's always looking for an excuse to take the Tesla on a road trip. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And he's like, he's needing to create some more content on the, uh, the wiring side of things anyways. So oh, that's I awesome. said, well, oh, no better, no better time to do it than here. So, um, so hopefully that works out. Um, if not, you know, we'll definitely get him to a future one too, but, uh, hopefully that'll work. So he was, he was excited about it on Friday when I was over at his place. So, um, other than that, I uh, continue creating some job postings, uh, kind of doing some fine-tuning on some of those as we try to hire both locally and, and nationally. Um, we were, we're looking to sponsor and be involved in a few events, so we're looking to, to keep working with some of our sort of our vendors and different folks to kind of try and do some some correlated sponsorships on some of those. Um, we're, I've got a meeting tomorrow night. We're probably picking up another retail store, so kind of finishing cool. up some negotiations there. To add that one to the uh, to the group of stores. Um, other than that, yeah, look, looking to if Eagle Eye ever gets me their pricing and whatnot and demo account, trying to uh, flip my my retail stores over to them to uh, to kind of get more of a demo going with them. Um, and then I guess my only final thing is I'm trying to see if I'm gonna fly or drive in Nashville. The fiance hasn't been doing too great with flights lately, so uh, mm, might okay. might make the drive in. So uh, We'll see, but either way works, so uh, should be a good time. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much the pretty much the gist of things. So lots of that's a lot, <laughs> lots of fun stuff. But kind of a bit of a slow week this week. So I've got some some room uh, some some room in my schedule. So trying to get get some stuff done while I can, you know. Yep. Cool, man. So, Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, Christina, what are what are your goals? What are our goals, Christina? I know we've got a lot of swag bag stuff. And uh, what else have we got definitely going on? Swag bags. Definitely swag bags. Um, got to get that together. Um, just getting the final touches uh, for the meetup. I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to it, meeting everybody. And a personal goal for me this week is definitely be engaged fully and getting on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, get my oh, yeah. out there <laughs> so I can start looking um, possibly maybe some different avenues within my profession that I'm in now and maybe I might strike up something di completely different I'm not really sure so that's um, was definitely one of my top 2020 goals and I'm I'm ready to start uh, engaging fully in that avenue so pretty yep. Yeah, happy about that. So, but yeah, definitely meet up um, and get all that stuff together. And cool, can't wait to to do the thing. Yep. All right. Well, let us know how we can help. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Let's see who's next. Forgive me as I fumble. Um, Eric's not on the call. I don't think Jacob's on here. And then John, uh, John Laurie, um, are you are you ready for? Uh, are you still doing the demo with uh, with Guardian? <laughs> yes. Happen? Yes. Yes, it'll it'll good. happen. But, you know, it'll it'll be informal, but it'll happen. Um, good. 
um, you know, I've, I've uh, getting ready for that. Um, in terms of my goals of last week, I have not quite got the whole Aperio milestone that I wanted to, but uh, so I'm okay. deferring that to this week. Um, did get my Nashville um, uh, travel arrangements taken care of. It turns out that one of my old fraternity brothers from school um, lives in Nashville, and so I might be um, uh, crashing with him, which will be nice. I haven't seen him in about 20 years or so. Cool. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Cool. And, uh, um, and, then, uh, um, and then today I'm uh, submitting my proposal for that um, LVM-related job that I uh, talked about a couple of weeks back. So that's uh, finally getting um, underway. Just, uh, cool. This is more the, the formal proposal so that they, um, yeah. they can write the check on, which is nice. That's awesome. So, and then in, in terms of your uh, your, your demo, because you sent me the link to your, your PAX um, demo. Uh, and then we, we mentioned that you know you could hook up some, some uh, equipment on, on your demo side, mm -hmm. and then I could interact with it and then possibly do like a demonstration video. What, um, I'll, I'll have that steps for yeah, I'll have, I'll have, yeah, I'll have that. I'll have that done like tomorrow or Tuesday. I'll just uh, and um, right now the equipment that uh, I, I have a Pelican uh, case that I'll probably be bringing that has various equipment and um, and that stuff I just I have currently connected to a Genetech system, so I need to do a little bit of re reassignment in the lab. Uh, but I'll get that done by Tuesday. Cool. All right. Let me know. And then maybe when you're on site, maybe if we have any time, we can go over some stuff. Maybe get some content, do a little promo stuff. I don't know. Just a thought. I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, I'm on. Cool. All right. Thanks, John. <clears throat> see, Jordan, she's doing other stuff. And then Marco. What does Marco have going on? What doesn't Marco have going on? Buying stickers, designing. <laughs> t-shirts like when he, i saw like another thing pull up on instagram i was like i got a new design for something it's like a challenge coin what was that <laughs> i'm just playing with ideas i don't know i'm trying to <laughs> trying to come up with uh cool eye catchy stuff you know because who the heck wants to put a plain sticker somewhere you know <laughs> but so what was that was that a challenge coin or just a sticker i was just playing with ideas for for okay. uh, some decals and whatnot yeah i got you know it. i, I until until I put the ideas on paper, I don't know if they're good or bad, you know? <laughs> yep. Yep. And then what about your stuff you had? You said wrap up punch list, stuff from a couple projects with Salto Brevo. Did you get all that stuff done? So the Salto Brevo we, we pushed uh to this week. Uh the building wasn't ready for us. They they they're not painted yet, so we can't really get in there and, and start putting that final equipment in. Um so it's it's probably been pushed a couple of weeks. Um, have uh, the parking gates? We're, we're still waiting for the contractor to pour the concrete island slab, so we can't map those. But we are getting the cameras fired up in the access control at that site, so that's good. Um, the end user will be happy to uh, have that all taken care of. And then this week, a um, bunch of meetings, uh, new opportunities. Uh, got a, one of one of the bigger um, communication contractors out this way actually reached out to us or, or, or me on Instagram and wanted to discuss uh, some jobs that, mm. uh, you know, he was applauding our work. So that was uh, kind of impressive to hear directly from someone of that caliber. So that, that was cool. So meeting with the uh, CEO this week. And then a um, couple of the jobs that uh, we're going to review with some new um, developers and hopefully uh, get something on the books for them. Cool. That's pretty cool that somebody actually saw your stuff on Instagram and they were pretty high profile. Is that what I heard? That yes. They, yeah. I yeah. was kind of impressed myself. <laughs> All that hard work finally has paid off on Instagram. <laughs> finally, finally. Those those pictures, I tell you, those precise pictures. <laughs> the watermarks and everything and your stickers everywhere. I love it. That's cool. it. That's it. All right. I, I skipped over Josh. Josh, sorry about that. I don't even know if you're on. Oh, yeah, here you are. So, Josh, what do you, what do you got going on, brother? 
Sorry about that. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure if I even had my mic on there. Sorry. You do have it on. Um, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good sign then. Um, so let's, oh, got to close out these things. Um, that's kind of vague. I've uh, got to fin finish up a move in this week uh, for a client. We just got to get the automated shades in and give them the final walkthrough on their on their system. They moved in Saturday. Okay, that's on a residence. Um, we're we're still waiting on a start date. We've got a medical facility that we're supposed to a 25,000 square foot building that we're supposed to start running all doing all the cabling and uh, for, for everything. And they keep pushing back. Uh, they're still framing the interior. So. And you're just doing the structured cabling for that or no, doing uh, structured cabling, access control, surveillance, conference rooms, oh, wow. background music, um, there's probably a few things I've missed there. Pretty much, if it if it's low voltage, we're doing it. That's awesome. Um, got another client that just got the go ahead that we've got a project down in uh, just outside of Panama City. I put a a note out there in general, but uh, you know if anyone is in that general area or nearby, uh, you know we got a client that that house is progressing and about to ship out all the speakers and all the Lutron. So we're going to sooner rather than later, it would be nice to try to find some folks closer in just to help us when we go to uh, finish up this house. It's a nice, you know, 10,000 square foot house on the beach that we're fully automating. And so you need, you need technicians or what do you need exactly? Yeah. Yeah. Gonna, okay. gonna need some more kind of locally based folks or at least nearby. Cool. And, okay. and, and, and then we've got a government client that we're trying to get wrapped up on a surveillance and access control job as we've got, uh, we've got all of the equipment in and they've added a few things so we're just trying to get that done and get their uh get them lined up to get the active directory set up for brevo and take that system live for a couple of sites so uh, hopefully get that done inside of the next two weeks here were you able to do any of the the social media stuff the google my business and qr code thing <sighs> The no, I I have not done that yet. I've I've still been the way I've been doing that is pretty much talking to a client while I'm there and yeah. sending them that sending them that link in a text and it's right about twenty percent of the time I'm getting a response. So I I'd, I'd like to come up with a better way of doing that. Well, twenty percent's okay, not great, but it's better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What else you got That's, going on? There, there's, there's a lot more going on. Um, <laughs> but that, that's, that's kind of where, where my, Oh, actually we're doing our first, uh, actually got, uh, a client that I met a couple of weeks ago that has a chain of Popeye's restaurants. And we're going to do our first pilot location for switching over their surveillance um at one location they they actually had an attempted uh robbery this past week in the surveillance system surprise surprise wasn't working properly <laughs> so they call yeah. they they called back and said how soon can you uh get in here but they've got 26 locations so this will be the pilot location and the hope is that they like what we put in and like what we do and then we can get the 25 other locations and it looks like they're primarily still on analog cameras and it's about a dozen cameras per location on top of switching out the VMS. Cool. Good luck with that. Sounds yeah, good. Thank you. Yep. So th those are the things off the top of my head. I'm sure there's more, like you said. 
<laughs> yes, sir. Indeed. <laughs> Good enough for the next few days. Yep. Uh, Mark, excellent. You still on the call? I think Mark dropped off, maybe. Let's go down the list. Mark is typing in Slack right now. Mason's not on. So, Mick, uh, what do you got going on? You still there? Yeah, it's too late, Mike. Yeah. Hello. Uh, the, uh, finally, finally pulled out the Blue Yeti mic last night. Did a, <laughs> did a bit of a recording over a screencast, I think it's called. So uh, that was pretty cool to have a player in with the microphone. Yeah, so what do you think of the quality of, of the Blue Yeti with doing straight recording into the uh, computer? Oh, it sounded much better than what I've ever done before. Yeah, it just good. Um, Yeah, oh, it sounded amazing. Uh, I like the, is it, uh, what's it called? The Just the directional feature of it was, you know, that was great as well. Um, mm -hmm. I did have a, yep. just to test it, I had a bit of music playing in the background sort of behind the microphone and um, didn't completely block it out. So, yeah, I think obviously next time I'll just make sure the room is silent. But, um, no, the quality was amazing. Really, uh, yes. Yeah. So you're doing instructional videos uh, mm. for online courses? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, so I sort of dreamed up a, a large sort of, yeah, almost a course, you might call it, you know, a, a, uh, with about a dozen modules. Um it's sort of, I'm not going to record that straight away, but I've sort of got an outline of that now. Um, mm -hmm. and, but just to, you know, rather than put all the time and effort into that and, you know, not knowing what may come of it, I might just put some smaller tutorials together, you know, just to, yeah, get some practice and uh, sort of see, you know, see what sort of interest I can generate, what sort of topics I can uh, teach. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to, yeah. Just looking forward to the whole process, really. Just uh, learning something new and um, yeah, seeing where it will lead. Yeah, just uh, keep documenting the process. I think how I found out about it was you were doing something on Instagram, just showing your little um, your home recording studio <laughs> that you put together <laughs> with your computer. That's right. So yeah, uh, the quietest part of the uh, of our house is the garage. So um, <laughs> uh, and we're yeah, we're sort of. We're in between houses at the moment. I might have mentioned before we're waiting to build our new house, hopefully this year. So, um, yeah, just uh, just trying to find a little corner of the garage and thought, oh, this is a good a place than any to to you know just to start with. And yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, I might just keep keep posting things, and yeah, you never know what may come of these things. So you know, uh, as the saying goes, you never know who you're going to meet at a barbecue or you know whatever it is. You never know what's going to come of something to you. Hey. Throw exactly. it out there and see what sticks. So, uh, no, excited, man. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. One piece of advice is uh, get a, uh, a microphone stand, like one of the boom stands, so you can get it closer yeah. to your mouth so you can be okay. comfortable. Because I did, I think, 50-plus episodes of me hunching over, and, uh, uh, yeah. and I destroyed my back and my forearm from, like, reaching oh, over to the mouth in, like, a real, real, real awkward position. So get comfortable. <laughs> that's my advice. Sure. Yeah, no, that's great advice. Uh, so yeah. do you think do you think the mouth has to be fairly close to the mark? As in, yeah, the closer the, the better. Know? Yeah, from okay. in my experience, the closer the better. Uh, even with because I had the blue yeti, I actually got rid of it. I, I wanted to get something nicer, actually. Uh, but yeah. um, but you got to pay for it. Unfortunately, they're expensive. If you want it to sound good, uh, but the blue blue yeah. yeti is a good mic. But put put your mouth close to it for sure. But just okay, watch. Yeah, make, sure yeah. you, make sure it's not clipping. Just put your earphones into the Blue Yeti to make sure you can monitor it properly. Make sure it's not clipping, yeah. but get get all up in that mic for sure. Okay. What do you mean by clipping? What what's clipping? Well, clipping is when it peaks, when it goes above zero dB, and it'll it'll uh, it'll make this distorted sound. You'll hear this like really loud, awful distorting sound when it clips. Okay. Yep. Sure. Just make sure it's not, yeah. You'll you'll know it when you hear it. it. It'll go red on the meters, and then it'll sound like crap. Okay, and is that me? Would that be me talking too loud or talking too close? Yeah, talking or? too loud, talking too close, having the gain too high. Yeah. There's a number of reasons why it would clip. Okay, no, thanks, mate. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. If you if you want to send me over some samples or anything, uh, let me know, and I can kind of just tell you what I think about the audio levels and quality. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I um, all, all I've sort of done so far is just read out a a PowerPoint slideshow that I've you know sort of put together. Mm -hmm. Um. 
and you're just reading over the top. And I had a quick listen to it back last night, and it sounded sounded okay. I mean, to me, it sounds great. I'm sure you've you know, you've you're used to listening to this stuff more, so you know you could probably yeah. find some <laughs> find some areas I could improve on. But um, yeah, no, I will, mate. If I get a something, I'm happy to present a bit. <laughs> I'll flick it over to you. Yep, send it my way. I'll let Thank you. Know. you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Cool. Uh, Pierce, you still there? I don't know if Pierce is still there or not. He may have dropped off. Pierce, you still there, brother? I'm messaging him on Slack, but I don't know if he's on the call or he's not. He's probably, probably on mute again. Mute purgatory. Yeah, cell phones are difficult to use. I guess. Are they? <laughs> oh, I just like give him crap, and he'll come back. <laughs> uh, I'll, so I'll go to Raymond. Raymond, what you got going on, brother? Um, <clears throat> we uh, we we had done this bowling alley locally. It's, it's a pretty nice new bowling alley. We had done like ninety cameras in there, and one of the investors, he's oh, like, wow. a, "Yeah, it's been a it's been a little headache project. They keep on adding stuff, and but one of the investors, he's like a real estate guy." I bumped into him the other day. He's building apartment complexes, like the 36 unit and the 50 unit. So he asked us to do the give him a quote for structure cabling and fire alarm. But I'm not licensed electrician in California yet to do fire alarms, so I'm working on that. And then um, I got a membership with IPVM that one of the one of the other guys had mentioned it, where it's got that cool tool where you could drag and drop cameras. And I actually yep. used it on a quote, and I won the quote because of it. Yeah, I, yeah, that that tool is awesome. It's worth every penny just for that alone for the the IPVM membership. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and then it, that that's what blew the customer away. He goes, "Whoa, is this the actual camera and what like views I'm going to get?" I'm like, "Yeah," and, and it gives him the description. And one of these other guys that I know, he uh, for proposals, he he recommended me use a jet built. I signed up for that, and um i don't know if you guys are familiar with it but look into mm -hmm. it I, I wasn't using anything for proposals before because i wasn't like up until now i've been doing a lot of subcontract work so the the you know us using that for proposals and um that's been a big game changer too because it's not just a line item and no visual quickbooks estimate type of thing it's actually giving a picture description uh it breaks everything down and also gives you on our end a little chart of uh, how many proposals we have out there, how much money that each one makes, and um, what stage they're in. So uh, I've actually won a few of that too because I, I, I go in, I, I email it to them. I also print it out and put it in a nice little binder and I hand it to them and I describe it. And it's mm. just really like the visuals really make you um, uh, set apart from the competition. I remember I listened to one of your podcasts, it was the same gentleman with IPPBM, I forgot who it was. Was it it's probably Mason Bortz? Yeah. Mason, a, yeah, it was Mason. Yeah, he's the one so, who showed me that, and he also we talked in great detail about how important it is to make that presentation look nice, and how you'll you can charge more and win bids because of it. Yeah, and it, and it's just a simple. You don't want to bash your. It's not bashing the competition, but it, it's just reminding the customer. Look, if you put in this much time on the estimate and proposal, what yep. what am I going to bring to the table when I actually install and service you? So. That goes a long way. So it, that, it certainly it certainly does. Yeah. So that's about it for right now. Just a couple of quotes out there and a couple of projects to end up the finish up this week. So and what was the to other tool called? The proposal tool? Uh Blue Jet something? Built. No, Jet Built. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was I was gonna talk to you about uh there's these guys, maybe they should, uh if you if you wouldn't mind being in our group, uh they're AA custom. They're very good. They do control force stuff and just general mm -hmm. good installers out of the Bay Area. We work with them hand in hand here and there. And yep. uh, he actually referred me to them. And it's a cool, uh, pretty cool platform for building proposals. So I signed up for it. It was I don't know if it was pricey or not, but it's it's already paid itself off. So cool. Can can yeah. you drop a, a link or some more information into the ambassador channel? Yeah, yeah, of course. That sounds interesting. Thank you. Thank you guys. And uh, Raymond Marco here. Are you talking about calculator.ipvm, that one? Uh, the the cal yeah it's like the cal uh, the IPPVM website has this uh yeah you can you put it on the map right you can add all the cameras to it and different whatnots yeah yeah cool I, I haven't seen if I could do it on I think if you have blueprints of a job 
for inside cameras, but for like the Google images on the outdoor project we did, it worked great. And, and that yeah, guy, that really blew the guy out awesome. of the wall. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, you can upload PDFs of existing blueprints into it as well. For yeah. Inside stuff. I mean, even yeah, even cool. their even their articles for two hundred bucks a year, it's pretty. It's yeah, pretty it good. Is. It is. It's worth it. So. Cool, man. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yep. yep. Uh, Pierce said he's back online. Pierce, are, are you there? Are you? <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. All right, Pierce. Let's move on to. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody else before Zach. He's like the last one. Zach, you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Oh, I thought I lost everybody. Okay. Oh, then Sebastian. I forget. Yeah, I got to put him on as well. Um, yeah, Zach, let's go through um, some of your stuff. What you got going on? <clears throat> well, I'm still trying to close on a um, an account for a pretty large lumber yard locally here. They have a bunch of different locations. I'm just stuck on some network hurdles trying to get response out of their uh, their IT department. They're not wanting to have all kinds of excuses on network issues for this, which is kind of alarming. Um, supposedly, you can't get into, they have a, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it right now. It's a, they basically have all their routers VPN through the, um, it's, it's an MPLS network, that's what I was looking for. Gotcha. And they have all the routers connected through the ISP. And um, originally I wanted them to get into the router and create a trunk port and trunk a VLAN specifically for all the camera equipment and have a DHCP pool for that. Mm -hmm. And they said that there's no way of doing that. Um, and they don't want to bother CenturyLink for getting into it and whatnot. And so they wanted to get a switch that does DHCP in it so after going back and forth with uh, ScanSource or Cisco distributor, we finally decided on a Cisco 9200 CADless switch, which after licenses and stuff, it's like a $10,000 MSRP switch mm -hmm. to create the IP addresses and stuff. So it's it's getting complex, and it's just their their IT department um, trying to get approval through them for stuff. It's just it's been quite a pain and a slow process. So, But hopefully we'll get to the end and have a... Um, you know, have a good camera job under a belt here. So cool. Fun stuff. What else um, you got going on this week? Uh, I'm going to be probably tomorrow going to uh, get signatures on a contract for a new residential alarm system and access control system. Someone doing an in home uh, senior care. So I have a lot of people coming and going and they want to do like a card access. So we're going to use a, um, it's a, uh, what's the brand? It's an Infineus access control. It's a single door POE controller. And you can um, hook all your peripherals to it. And it's pretty affordable for every door you add on to it. So it's completely flexible and you can remotely manage it and stuff. So it'll be a pretty good little job. A lot of retrofitting different access control equipment and trying to install strikes and um, we'll be doing, you know, the request exit devices and contacts and stuff. So it'll be a bit of work, but it'll turn out pretty nice. Cool. Anything else? Anything else uh, meetup wise that we need to focus on? In terms of the meetup, not that I can think of. I think we're pretty well covered on all of that. Yeah, and then I saw that Pierce was going to bring a uh, a certifier, a fluke certifier. I think that, I think that'd be awesome too. Yeah, that'll be pretty cool. And then he's also going to bring um, <clears throat> some basic tools for just assembling the rack, if I understand correctly. Okay. And, you know. Yep. Termination stuff from vertical cable. Cool. Okay, let's uh, let's try Pierce for the for the third time. <laughs> he, he got back in. All right. Hey, Pierce, you there? Yeah. Can y'all hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, sort of. Yeah, you're good. Finally. Yeah. What What happened? You just fat fingered and hung up on me. And I don't know. I, I went to I went to unmute my phone, hung up accidentally, called back in. The system had me muted. So whatever. okay. Yeah. What well, doesn't matter. So uh, what, what do you what do you have going on this week in terms of goals? And stuff? Uh, getting ready to come see you. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> okay. 
Um, no, this week. So, yeah, I'll repack and replant a little bit to come down there because I wasn't planning on bringing tools and shit, but I'll bring some now. And okay. trying to line up some... My main client is starting to ramp back up, but they just changed the schedule around. Everything they had slated for the upcoming weeks is gone, so now I've got a plan for the different sites now. So we're working on that. I am starting to work on a website with Wix, and I am starting to look for more local stuff uh, around State College and not being so reliant on one big whale of a client anymore. Yep. So yeah, that's, that's uh, it. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah, Nashville Yards is a very large uh development here in nashville so if you want any work man keep telling you come to nashville well i'll come down there and you know crash on your floor and work for a couple weeks how's that yeah <laughs> cool uh i think that's it i think that's all we got for you pierce just show okay. up to the meetup and uh there, there's going to be interview i don't know if you caught that but there's gonna be interviews uh mike from vertical cable i don't know if you wanted to uh, participate in one of those but i'm trying to get yeah. some folks I think you might be a pretty good person to do that. You're well spoken and you're pretty popular on Instagram. <laughs> I'll be ha- I'll be happy to participate. I'll be there some point Saturday afternoon, probably well, I don't know yet, but some point Saturday Saturday afternoon. Yep. Yep. Uh Mike from Vertical Cable is gonna be there at eleven AM on Saturday and then we have some time slotted on Sunday, but maybe we can do some stuff Saturday as well. So that'd be awesome yeah. if you uh do an interview. We'll make it work. Word. All right. Uh, did I? Oh yeah, Sebastian. Hey, Sebastian, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. So yeah, so <laughs> this is actually a pretty long meeting we've had. Um, thanks for sticking around. Uh, what we do is we do some goal setting and then kind of just check in and see how you got how you're doing and how low voltage nation can help you uh, be successful. Yeah, um, uh, I mean, I've never been uh, huge on goal setting as much as I probably should be. Um, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. But uh, I mean, right now it's just wrapping up a couple projects I got going on and. Uh, Probably my biggest project right now is uh, I don't know if LVN would be interested or not. So I've really been pushing mm-hmm. into the cannabis industry um, okay. more on the IT side of stuff, right? So okay. one of the things that we're trying to really do is push and legitimize it. Mm-hmm. So we're working on a certification program for the cannabis industry. And the idea is to push to make sure that they're HIPAA compliant, they have an adequate, you know, licensed uh, MSP company to manage things. Their access control is legitimate. They have ethical products. Um, and we're looking to get state uh, endorsement so that, that we can then go and say, yeah, you want to be certified under the certification program, you know, as a distributor, as a producer, as a growery, then you have to have these IT companies in place. And these are our mm-hmm. recommendations to make sure that you know everything is set up across the board um right now it's extremely early planning um but i think it's a good business opportunity for everybody around and really allows to legitimize the industry while pushing business for the local providers i think it's very interesting i'm not sure what other people's stance is on that but i'm definitely interested in it what whatever we can do to help make things better in the industry especially on you know the low voltage side access control all, all that i think it is pretty lockstep with what we are trying to accomplish at low voltage nation, especially around the gold standard stuff. So I'm definitely interested in it. Yeah. And you know, I've worked for my the last MSP I worked for, um, worked with some of the largest cannabis producers in new England. And so I've seen the lack of security and the lack of emphasis on a lot of things. And, you know, like I was just doing an IP scan all of a sudden I find, Oh, look, here's all your access control with default passwords. That, that's a problem, guys. And they're just like, eh. Yeah, yeah. It's like, come on. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I'm really trying to encourage that. Cool. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, there's a couple of uh, remarks in the Ambassador channel um, already. I think Chris Tiffany and Josh Lepton have some contacts or some information around that. So, looks like there is some interest. So, that's good. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, anything else, Sebastian, you want to jot down or... Um, I mean, it's just general project wrap ups, I suppose. Nothing yep. particularly exciting. So, yeah, what what is your specialty exactly? What do you what do you do? I mean, primarily MSP, um, okay. but I've really been oh, pushing sweet. into cabling infrastructure. Um, I mean, as a business, I'm barely a year old, so yeah, I'm still young. Uh, okay, and then where where are you located? Uh, Maine. You're in Maine. Okay. 
Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, Brandon Weber and I, we we run a podcast called MSP Weekly. So if you wanted to get on that and maybe talk more about what you do, um, that's always an option. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, definitely. Sweet. All right, brother. Um, cool. I think uh, I think I covered everybody. If did I miss anybody? Anybody else have anything they want to add to this very long meeting? <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, cool. Well, um, I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, y'all one, enjoy. One quick thing, Blake, if I can toss in there. Uh, Chris yep. here. Just so everyone everyone knows, if you haven't seen my posts, um, we're all ITUSA on Instagram, and we are completing our brand migration. So now it's uh, at Sprinter Datacom uh, as we kind of work to, to combine all our divisions under the, the Sprinter uh, name. So uh, if we're not on there when you go to tag us or find us, uh, it's under Sprinter Datacom now. And I've updated all of our Slack and whatnot like that as well behind that. So just uh, as a general heads up. Sprinter data com. You're, yep. you're doing a complete sweep of all your social media and website and everything. Yeah. I mean, the all IT USA was always sort of our, uh, just our contracting division and we didn't really plan on doing much marketing off of it. Um, but that's kind of changed a bit and we're doing more marketing and we're like, look, let's just keep the Sprinter IT with Sprinter data com, Sprinter business, Sprinter security, um stuff like that kind of to be able to just market that one brand um instead of having a lot of confusion across you know is it all at usa is it sprinter like you know whatnot so um figured if we're gonna make the change might as well do it before uh before we hit more get more content and get more stuff going you know so change it before yep. i hit a thousand followers on instagram so <laughs> yeah yeah Sprinter Datacom. Cool, man. Well, thanks for the announcement. Uh, that, for me, it's very important to thanks. be consistent with branding and especially, you know, you, you're doing a lot of stuff out there. So we want to make sure we're driving the, the correct message. Cool. All right. Well, um, y'all enjoy the rest of your uh, your Sunday and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. So thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Blake.